Hi, greetings from South Korea. This session is Reflective Practice in Task-Based Language Teaching. My name is Robert Dickey, and I hope to make your next 10 minutes exciting, stimulating, wonderful in every way you can think of. Let's start. In this conference, this session falls under the theme of other. We're talking about reflective practice, and we're talking about task-based language teaching, which is probably better known as task-based language learning. Quick introduction of myself. I've got about 25 years teaching English and teaching assorted other content area courses in Korea. I'm a frequent conference presenter, uh, Korea, East Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, IETEFL, TESOL International, various other conferences, including LTAI in India. I am the editor of the International Journal of Law, Language, and Discourse. Find us at IJLLT.com. We are looking for submissions. I'm the past president of Korea TESOL. I am an ELT trainer. And for those who are concerned about these things, I have a master's degree in public administration, a Juris Doctor or Doctor of Law, a RSA CTEFLA, which is now called CELTA, and I've completed the coursework for a master's in English education. So we're talking about task-based language teaching, something that basically was presented to the world by Prabhu out of the Bangalore project, first published in 1987. And when we look at this topic, we find many prescriptivists who guide us on how to do it. They give us rules and guidelines. People like Ellis, Noonan, Jane Willis, Jane and Dave Willis, and others' books. And we have countless journal articles that talk about the good and the bad, the right and the wrong. On the other hand, descriptivists tend to tell us what teachers really do. And questions arise about the difference between a task, an activity, an exercise. For me, that really came home when I was working on a uh, school's course book here in Korea. And finally, I had to say that I, had, I, I have to quit. I have to drop out. I can't do this. You keep changing your ideas of task. Now my daughter is studying in one of those books, and she's frequently telling me, Daddy, I have a task. I need to something like uh, fill in the blanks in this sentence or uh, write these sentences in English that were originally in Korean. And I'm sorry, but for most people, that's not a task. That's probably an exercise. We also hear stories about what are task-based lessons? Uh, Jane Willis is most famous for presenting the pre-task, task, post-task post design. But then various scholars argue what fits in which section. Uh, do we do explicit language teaching? If we do, is that in pre-task? Is that in a post-task? We have various types of tasks. David Noonan presented the idea of real-world tasks, tasks that emulate real-world situations, that when learners do this, they understand that they're doing something in practice for the real world. Noonan also offered the idea of a pedagogic task, something that's not tied to the real world. Learners understand they are practicing English. Now, personally, I think that gets more closer to maybe an activity or an exercise. I'm not really sure, but you know, I'm not arguing with David Noonan. Then I offer something I call the authentic task. An authentic task is something that students are doing for a reason. Probably they're doing it in the classroom, maybe outside, but these are things that have a real, tangible, genuine purpose. For example, they have to clean the classroom. How do they assign who does what? What do they do? Um, organizing a game planning a field trip, if they're actually doing this in English and they're going to have real-world impact, genuinely affecting that learner, that is an authentic task. Uh, Rod Ellis talked about task-supported lessons, which has more explicit language teaching in it. And I think a lot of language teachers are much more comfortable with this design. Um, and then there is the task-based syllabus designed by Noonan, which suggests that over the course of weeks, months, uh, a full year, uh, several years. The syllabus is not designed around language learning points, but is designed around tasks. For me, this gets close to the old functional notional syllabus. So I asked some teachers, what do you think is the difference between an a task, an activity, and an exercise? How could we plot this? How could we draw this out? 
So I started with this universe of ELT activity, which is kind of here. CLT, Communicative Language Teaching. We put in the center of the universe. And then exercises could be communicative, but maybe not. Tasks are probably communicative, but maybe not. Task-based language teaching by its design should be a communicative language teaching activity. But then we get this uh, authentic task that I offer, which could be here, or they could creep here, or perhaps somehow they could even sweep out here, outside of pure English language activity. But the learners are doing it in English, and that's not a bad thing. All right? So, when we talk about reflective practice as we change gears, Thomas Farrell is probably the leading speaker on, on reflective practice in ELT. Um, I'm going to offer the idea that guides uh, somewhat loosely associated with the idea of prescriptivists. Guides give us ideas of how to do. They give us approaches and tools. Not must, not prescriptively, but they give us lots of ideas of things we could do, such as reflective journals, records, reflective groups, and sessions. Whereas reporters, more like descriptivists, they tell us teacher stories, teacher's reflections. These could be the reflectors themselves, it could be compilations of stories, something I'm going to talk about at the end of this session. Um, these could include deliveries through conference presentations, teacher's workshops, newsletters and posters, and maybe in books or journals, but not usually so much. What is reflection? Well, I think of reflection as the other side of the teacher's desk. Too often teachers get caught up with, I'm delivering my lesson, all right? And what did I do on the chalkboard? And did I speak clearly? And did I use the time effectively? But how are the learners seeing this? You know, what are they getting out of the lesson? What do the learners think? Well, we as teachers need to spend more time thinking about the learner's perspective. Sit in the learner's chair. Reflection is not something admin says you have to do it. I mean, it could be, but the goal of reflection is that I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it for my benefit as a teacher. So when do we do reflection? Well, there's three different main themes out there right now. Traditionally, people talked about reflection on action. Okay, this idea. That reflection was about how I did, what I did, why I did, did I do well. But nowadays, we're also talking about things like reflection for action. Preparing before the class. What do I hope to accomplish? How will I accomplish it? How will learners think about this? And then reflection in action is in the heat of the battle, at the heat of the moment. But of course, we have lots of scholars, so there are various interpretations on what all these things mean. I want to suggest that as part of our reflection, we build that into our lesson planning. Not just the template that the school requires us to do, but our genuine lesson planning. Uh, I use a template with my learners with my uh, future teachers, where I require them to write down what the students are doing at any given moment in the lesson as they plan it. What are the learners doing? And how do we assess what they're doing? As well as thinking about things like, what is the motivation for learners in this class? What are our teaching aims as a target language and as any other content? Is it uh, a content-based class? Is it, I'm trying to prepare students for tests? What, what are other aims? Any assumptions, what students know or don't know? What, what do we expect for problems? What kind of problems do we expect? These are all things that we need to be thinking about before the lesson. So reflecting on task-based lessons. I'm looking for new insights. Every teacher should be looking for new insights from their own classroom as a teacher. And they should be looking for new insights from their learners in their classrooms. And these insights should impact the teacher's future lesson development. They should be impacting what they expect from learners when learners are doing their activities or tasks. The reflection should improve a teacher's self-worth. They should improve teacher's empowerment. We're not doing this for other people. We're doing it for ourselves. Thus, basically, I'm suggesting we're looking at kind of a push and pull in reflection, that classroom tasks drive teacher's reflection, that classroom tasks drive learner reflection, which then if the learners tell the teacher, that drives the teacher's reflection, 
that teacher reflection is driving the tasks and that reflective practice during the task. Teachers aren't supposed to talk too much during the task. They're supposed to be helpful. So at the same time, I can be thinking, how is this working? How are learners working? Was this the right lesson? Was this the right task? Uh, do all the learners get this equally? Do I need to differentiate? What do I need to do? So in closing, I'm looking for stories. I'm looking to hear teachers' reflections on their classrooms, in particular, task-based lessons. Especially, I'm looking for short stories of 100 to 200 words. And those can go in the book, along with your name, if you want it. Don't worry about perfection. We have time to refine, to fix the language, to fix the form, the style. Right now, we're just looking for ideas. If you want to share, please contact me. My name is Robert Dickey. You can find me at robertjdickey at yahoo.com. If you want to know more about me, you can take a look at my academia.org page, academia.edu page. And uh, please enjoy the conference. Have a good day.